Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is 2v2 tips, small little tips and tricks you can implement into your 2v2 gameplay that you might not have thought of. It might have come to you in another video or something, but these are things that I try and put into every single one of my games and it helps me out. It's something I haven't really spoken about, I think. Uh, there's lots of little things in here. It's going to be two of my replays. We're going to go over and just talk little bits about everything that I'm doing. All the small things that I don't really get a chance to say in the live comment series or in my other tips in my tips videos just because they're kind of not big enough to explain in in depth but definitely once you start using them you'll see some uh, immediate progress. So starting off there we got a good a nice easy goal thanks to a raid I believe his name is. But here I'm going to start pausing it as well. So here I started learning recently when to challenge I was focusing on it a lot more. But you can see, I go back, get the boost here in turn. I'm watching my teammate here more than the ball. I know at this point the ball is going off the wall and it's coming straight back in in the middle. But I'm watching where my teammate goes. So the second I see he's rotating back, I jump up, I start to challenge it. Unfortunately, I do miss that one there, but it's about timing your challenges so you don't put your teammate in the wrong, in the wrong position. And here's another thing that I actually haven't spoken about ever because I haven't really used it until now. But demos, I, I definitely think you should be aiming to get at least one demo per game for, mul for multiple reasons. First off, demoing, you know, kind of tilts people. And if you can get your opponent tilted in like a, in a way that isn't bad mouthing them, that's good. Like you're in a very good position here. And secondly, demoing people is a great way to create space for your teammate. As you'll see, my teammate didn't really take the opportunity. He went backwards. Drove back to his own net. If he'd followed up, we'd, we would have had a pretty easy goal, but unfortunately he couldn't. Uh, he went back to get some boost. But here you'll see, I'm just watching my teammate again. I know it's pretty clear to push up here, and it was half a pass. It was, sorry, it was going to be half a pass before I saw that he stayed on that mark there, waiting for the boost. So I know in this position, I've got pretty much full boost, 80 boost. Um, and I'm going to start crossing Nick Wilde. So crossing means I'm going... If I started pushing towards net now, he'd be in a very good position to shadow defend. And so I cross him, I go uh, straight across and decide to take over him. At this point, I've landed on the on the right side of the ball, which means I can then go back and cross Mosto, uh, which I do kind of. I just jump up, pop the ball over him because I know he's coming in to, he's going to challenge immediately because of what's happened, which he does. Luckily, my teammate follows up there, and I'm really sorry, I've just noticed this now, if you can hear, but I've actually got a, a pretty bad cold, which is why my, my voice might sound a little bit different. <laughs> Listening back to myself then, I've understood that I sound a tad different, I think. But yeah, so um, definitely, so far, all I have to say is, make sure you're watching your teammate. Like, you'll understand where the ball is, so you need to be watching your teammate and your opponents. Understanding your opponent's movement is going to help you make better decisions and understanding your teammates movement is going to help you understand when you should be challenging the ball. Apart from that, you should always, always get at least one demo per game. It's just because you're going to create opportunities and you'll find yourself demoing your, uh, your opponents a lot more once you start going for these demos. You'll start looking for opportunities in which you can demo, which are going to open up a lot of space. Let's see, Raid unfortunately misses that. I go back and get the boost. So here, I know I'm not jumping in right away just because I'm watching my, my teammate on the top left corner here. He's gone back to get that boost. If he comes straight back to mid, I might have been able to challenge. So I just kind of hold position here. Don't push, don't push in too hard. And they end up giving the ball away, which again, I've, you've probably been told a hundred times at this point, it's in every video. Actually, that's something I want to go over as well. But don't give the ball away for no reason. I do it a fair few times and I need to really stop it. But once you understand how much you give the ball away for nothing, you'll stop doing it. You'll start learning dribbling a bit more because dribbling and infield passes are going to really help you out in the high levels of twos. So there's a move here. I jump very early and there's no way Nick Wilde is getting to it, obviously. Raid should come back and not challenge this. But I don't believe Mosto can get to this before I can. The thing I do wrong though is I waste, I think it's 50 boost all up just trying to get to this ball and it does like really doesn't do anything. I'm in a good position because Raid follows it up, but I should really line, you should really line yourself up before you go for those. So you're not wasting as much boost trying to correct yourself in the air. 
I get lucky here that Raid steps in. So right now I know that one of my opponents is behind me because of this. He's just hit the wall. He's just hit the back of my net. So we should be pushing this straight away. Raid does. He has the right incentive. He goes up and tries to get around it. And in this position, Mosto. So yeah, Raid's... Here we go. I'll explain like this. Raid's gone up. Mosto's committed to it fully and he's put it dead center. I take off my ball cam because I know I need to go for a dribble here. I haven't got a really good shot on net. And he's in a very good position to save it if I do shoot immediately. So I go for half a dribble and just play around him. The thing that really throws him off here is the accelerate. They, look at the immediate acceleration. I catch the ball and drive it straight towards him. Therefore, he's, he has to challenge immediately or I could put it top right. Because he's he was originally defending bottom left. I could put it top right incredibly hard in which he wouldn't be able to save it. So he has to challenge immediately. Which is why I decide to cross him and go back over to his left. Let's see. So yeah, this was this is another good reason as to why I didn't challenge early. My my teammate doesn't um, turn back quickly, like he's kind of low on boost. If I challenge here, it could go straight over top of me, and Mosto's in a pretty good position to hit a rebound or cover it if it's just going a bit wide. So I hold off a bit, just wait my time out. Once again, turning off ball cam, going for a, a dribble here, just because I can't shoot from this position. I'm not quite sure where my teammate is. I should have actually checked. But I just take it slow and try to dribble it. I get very lucky here. But the reason I do get lucky is because I delay the hit. Let's see if I can do it like this. Uh, let's go to 25%. I catch it here. We're in a position where I really have nowhere to shoot. They should be hitting this every single time. Saving it every time. So from their point of view, I've jumped up and I've probably failed a flick to them. Like I'm, I'm not in a threatening position at all. As it touches the ground, I start to flick it to one side. This realistically should not go in at all, but this is the only, I could have flicked it, might have had a shot, but this is the only real chance I had once I messed up that original pop. So I flick it to one side of him. Nick is already committed to turning inwards and has thrown himself off. So the reason I scored that is because I understood once I'd accidentally popped the ball up, my only decision was to try and delay flick and get it around them. I knew that I'd get it around one of them by flicking it to one side and I got very lucky to get it around the other one. Oh, camera's messed up a bit here. Oh no, that was me. Oh well, there we go. <laughs> I trust Raid in the air. Unfortunately, he tried to go for a uh, flip reset there and it wasn't quite working. But right here, I know that my teammates... So my teammate has fully, fully committed down the line here. Wait, I'll try to play that back. He's left. He's pretty much... Where is he? Uh, I should probably just do it this way, right? Yeah, so he's committed. He's got no boost. What is this from his point of view? He's picked up the boost. The only thing I can do... And he stopped doing this. <laughs> the only thing I can do here is make my way up the wall. I've got a pretty good amount of boost. I'm not wasting it here. And because of their positioning, Nick is already committed to pushing way too far downfield considering where his teammate is. Now, if Nick, if Nick had seen where his teammate was, he wouldn't have pushed this far up because he's, he's not in any position to get back and his teammate isn't either. If something like this happens. And this is exactly what I was talking about before. When my teammate was too far up. If they just hit it off the wall. And the teammate, uh, the, his teammate. Would have been in a great position to cover it. If, uh, if it was going wide or rebound it. Raid gets a nice touch. Just puts it straight over the top. So let's watch that back from his side. So you'll see you'll see exactly what I mean in a second because while he does go up for an unfortunate uh, he goes for a flip reset and misses it the same situation that would have happened if I had pushed up and the last one happens here and uh, while this plays out I'd like to say thank you so much for watching guys there is a giveaway over on my Twitter if you haven't checked it out you can be in the when in the runnings to win a uh, black market the 20xx or the pink solar flare anyway 
make sure you check that out that's in the description but otherwise that is everything for me today if you like the channel if you like the video make sure you subscribe to the channel to keep updated with any future content anyway that's everything for me i'll see you next time